Hey! Welcome to the Party Gamecast, featuring the Party Gamecast, a podcast about party games and games you take to parties. I am your, I suppose, host, Bruce, uh, because this is the Mid-Month Cavalcade. Mid-Month Cavalcade is, of course, when we present some of the Patreon-only content from the past and make it available to everyone. If you'd either like to get that content early or support the show to help us do things like get new microphones and get new food and get new games we can play, you can do that at patreon.com slash partygamecast. And a big thank you to everybody that helps out the show so that we can continue making it at the level at which we have been making it in this latest run. We're, we're very happy about that. We're very happy we've been able to do it. Um, also, more thank yous to go out. A big thank you to everybody that joined us at Three Gear Games for Extra Life, our 24-hour board game marathon. Uh, we also actually I want to take a second. I want to interrupt myself here uh, to thank our West Coast contingent. We have folks on the West Coast that are a distant part, an opposite coast part of the team that also do it for 24 hours. We want to thank you. We always forget to because we feel like it's the it's the big event we do, but it's folks from all over that join our team, and we thank you so much for your support. We also want to thank Three Gear Games for giving us an amazing space to hold this year's a shindig at. At one point, at like 3.30 in the morning, we had, I think, like between 15 and 20 people Going strong at 3.30 in the morning on the two floors that we had available. Also, a big thank you to Savage Mill. Uh, the Savage Mill actually opened up some of their other spaces that were not being rented so that we could have a couple of places to kind of stretch out and spread out and have events, and that was awesome. As a team, we raised just shy of $3,600 for the Children's Miracle Network. Technically, $3,591. Uh, which is just really incredible. We're not used to that. I, I want to say this might be maybe our second best year, might be our best year. I did not look into those stats, but it doesn't really matter because it's everybody getting together and playing games to help out the Children's Miracle Network, and specifically for most of us that are on the team, the Johns Hopkins Children's Hospital. So we want to thank, once again, Three Gear Games for taking the time to, to get together and really help us organize this and get us the venue and to talk to Savage Mill and for Savage Mill for getting us the venue. We want to thank Break My Game. A lot of folks from Break My Game showed up to join the team and to be a part of the 24 Hours, which was great. And any of you that came out or supported or helped us or sent uh, good positive feelings, all of that is huge. And we want to thank you so much. We're so excited uh, to, quite frankly, have been as much help as we, we got to be this year. I believe we are coming on very close. I think next year we will cross it. That over the years we have done this, we will give $20,000 to the Children's Miracle Network. I believe uh, next year... Most likely, whatever goal that we hit will have accomplished that. And I have to say, it just really feels good to be a part of something like that, to be able to help and to play a whole bunch of games and have a whole bunch of fun. Rocky and I got to test a thing out that we call Board Game the Game Show, which we will be presenting in its first official run at MAGFest this year. We'll give you more details as we get closer to MAGFest, as we know that that has been approved, because right now it has not. But we hope that Board Game the Game Show will, in fact, get approved there. So I feel like I've been babbling at you for quite a while. Once again, all the thank yous to everyone uh, involved in all the things that are happening. We're now going to jump into the what the food, what the food uh, from September for Patreon backers. All kinds of fun snack chips here. And one that we found that was really remarkable that I did not expect would be so good. And now I know. So I'm going to get out of your way now. I'll talk at you again when we get between uh, the two episodes. So um, let's jump into the show. Hey everybody, welcome to What the Food! What the Food! What the Food! What the Food! food. What the food. Thank you, Patreon supporters, for supporting us at Patreon. I'm your moderator, Bruce. Joining me in the show is Rocky. Hey. Mike. Howdy. And Brian. What's up? What's up, Brian? Not much. How you doing? I'm, I'm not bad. We have but one Brian this time. That we have is, a lone Brian. That is enough. That is that is our maximum required amount yeah. of Brian. Yeah, it's the RDA. Yeah, yeah, to be able to have a show. Yeah, you should have at least one. Oh, definitely. Any chance we get. Yeah, two. Sometimes it's a little much, but you know. No, no but it's it's worked out. We've done well with it. Yeah, I mean, we, we make do, but you know, sometimes too much of a good thing is, is too much. You know, sometimes you just want to stick with. Speaking of too much of a good thing, we have three, <laughs> three, three snacks on this episode. Oh. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you couldn't rehearse this, fellas. No. Alex, if you uh, ever thought yeah. that we were going to be uh, scripted or anything like that, nope. Oh, no. Nope. Nope. Hey, Mike, you skipped a line on your script. You weren't supposed to say that yet. Shut up. That was we, my line. We're all just cross talk and laughter. Ha. 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 Okay, Rocky, set us off. Uh, tell us a little bit about the theme for today's uh, three-peat of snackaliciousness, and then tell us about our first snack. Oh, the three-peat. So, uh, as far as I can tell, yeah. this is crispy things that are both sweet and a little savory. Okay. That's, yeah. That that seems like uh, the most vague way for us to put things together. It yes. describes a lot of snack it foods. It sure so does. So we've, we've got all the snacks that exist that are both sweet and savory. All of them. We're, yeah. You're, um, you're going to strap in, them. you know, listeners. It's going to be a while. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're going to go through every sweet and savory also, snack. Also, we are each going to be about 9,000 pounds yeah. by the end of this. Yeah, I'm yes. going to need, like... <sighs> Oh. So that means you need to strap in. Surgery. We can't. The straps will not fit soon. No. No, <laughs> we're going to need, like, tie downs. <laughs> so what are we starting with? Talk to us, Rock. What are we doing here? All right. So this one is from Korea. Okay. It is Nong Shim brand. It is sweet potato snack. And they kind of look like, at least on the package, they look like little crispy fries with black sesame seeds on them with a lounging sweet potato holding another sweet potato, which is a little disturbing. More than a little disturbing. Yes. Yeah. And, and I feel like w- what I want to do is say this. It is a purple sweet potato, so it sort of looks like an eggplant holding an eggplant in front of itself. Well, it's partially peeled, so like the top is, is sweet potato colored. Yeah. yeah. The skin is kind of purple. So yeah. It, yeah. And I would say we're going to get a picture of the little guy here. Uh, if you take a look at the notes for this, like when you look at the picture of what this episode is, there will be a picture of this little guy so that you get an idea of what exactly is going on with him. Do we have any fun uh, things? It's uh, ex- expired. <laughs> <laughs> that's always fun. Okay, that's normal. Yeah, um, best before October 27th, 2018. Huh. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of uh, weird ingredients, and that's it. No flavor text. Okay. Well, yeah. then let's, let's crack this thing open. Let's okay. Let's flavor. So they look, I don't, they're kind like, of like crinkly really? fries, but like bugs, like long, Are all weird, of them? Yeah, like waffly bugs. It looks like a centipede Here, slash crinkle around. fry. They, they smell of nothing. Okay, well, I would H- expect. How out of date are these? Um, October. Yeah, October 2018, yes. Okay, so they're okay. only 11 months out of date. Oh, that's fine. They smell like cardboard. They smell mm. like they've been packaged. And Ooh. they are the package. Okay, the bag smells like packing peanuts or something. Yeah, nice. It's my favorite. I'm ready. Let's do this. They don't smell as much. Yeah, no, they smell exactly like they the smell- bag does. Oh yeah, my it's word! Just yeah, they yeah. they do smell exactly like packing. And they taste like slightly sweet packing. Yeah. You get the sweet first, and then yeah. it finishes with a nice uh, packaging <laughs> note. I, this is a rare case where I think maybe had we eaten these in season. They wouldn't have been so bad. They would have tasted less like packaging. Maybe, because like at first you almost get the sweet potato, and then as you're about to like, oh, there's, and then it's pulled from your grasp by the packing. <laughs> that is exactly flavor. what happens. I will say it's got a nice crunch to it. Yeah. The texture's nice. Yeah. 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 Uh, I had one with sesame seeds, and you get the sesame seeds at the end. Oh, I didn't yeah. get to that. Let me see. Yeah. Well, the sesame seeds. It's not every single piece. I'm not sure. Uh, these are a lot of, these are more fun than I thought that, Eggplant holding an eggplant in front of itself was going to be presenting me. So disturbing. No, it these, really is. If these were new, I'd very much like them. Yeah. Now I just like them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this had been in date. They probably would have been pretty good. Yeah. And it's it's rare that I think we get one where you can tell if it had been in date. Often you're just like, this is this is garbage, and it would have been garbage no matter what. Yeah, I think the only oh, yeah. thing we that definitely made, had that. Like yeah. when we did Twinkies was the only thing where it was so out of date you could tell it made a difference. Yeah. I have to, like, let, let's do the thing we're supposed to do, and I'm, I'm already starting it, but I'll move it to Rocky. Would you take it to a party? Yes, I would. They're very nice. Mike? Hard to say. Um, as they are, no. Well, let's just use your use your imagination <laughs> to what they might taste like not almost a full year out of date. Um, yeah, I, I think I would. Uh, I'd, I'd give it a shot. I'm not a huge fan of sweet potato, so if they tasted more like... Um, sweet potato-y, 
when they're in season, as yeah. you said, yeah. then I I wouldn't eat them myself, but okay. I know that other people would, so I'd probably still take them. Fair. How about you, Brian? Is this the kind of party we take weird Korean snacks to? Let's pretend it is. Aren't yes. All of them? No. Let's pretend specifically it is the kind of party where you would bring weird Korean snacks. Then absolutely. And even if it wasn't, I'd probably bring it. These are, I mean, assuming they're in date. Um, yeah. But they're they're novel, but not scary. So like, yeah. I don't think you'd pull these out and people are like, ew, what's that? You know, it's not like, you know, uh, shrimp paste chips or something strange. Mm. You know, or the seaweed chips we've had before. Like these are, yeah, I'd bring them because they're they're fun. They're inoffensive and different. I like them. I like yeah, them. I'm probably going to continue to. Eat yeah, these them are too. actually. If you could just hand me like like one or two more, um, so we can munch on those while we work no, on our no. next international product. They're not all international, but the second one is definitely international. Yeah, cr- crunch that right into the microphone. Right. Barely international. Well, it is uh, one of our favorite brands, President's Choice. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, Makers yeah. of the best potato chip ever. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, maple and bacon popcorn. A mix of maple flavor, coated popcorn, and bacon flavor popcorn. Wow, I could really hear the you in that. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Now, do the fine folks at President Choice have anything fun to say about their uh, bacon and maple flavored? Do they have it to say in French? Um, they do. I never took French. <laughs> <laughs> but in English, a quintessentially Canadian flavor combination. The perfect mix of sweet maple flavor, coated popcorn, and smoky bacon flavor popcorn. It sure to become a snack time favorite. Also expired. <laughs> so this should be something. How expired? Yeah, how expired? <laughs> <laughs> um, best before 2018. Hard stop. Okay, well, it's not before <laughs> so it's, 2018. No. Yeah, only nine months out of date. So it makes uh, it so... Or... No, before 20... 2018. Oh, okay, so it's only... 21 months out of the yeah, add 12 to the last one or possibly 33 so, so there so there's there's a one-third chance that we're gonna like this popcorn but, but that's not really that's <laughs> not really fair because we're into a hundred percent are we of still it, doing that no, okay uh, so no. I, I thought that maybe, we no I thought, okay. we can't do that every episode no, we we don't have we done every episode no but, but it's like we've the, done it a lot of we've them. done it several we've done yes. it more than we needed to yeah, yeah that's probably at least true too so What's interesting from the phrasing is it seems like some popcorn is bacon and some popcorn is maple. Yes. But they're not both flavors at the same. You have to eat. No, you're going to have to make that flavor in your mouth. The Canadians don't have the technology to combine both maple and bacon and popcorn into the same kernel. Shake it around. You can taste. Hold on. It's maple or bacon or popcorn. Pick two. And you know what, Brian? That right there is the difference between the Canadians and us Americans. Is the Canadians are like, no, we can solidly do maple popcorn and we can solidly do bacon popcorn. Just put both types of popcorn in the bag. And Americans are like, we can make a really terrible version with both flavors, but we only have to make one seasoning powder. And that's what we do. Yes. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah, we're ready. I've been ready. Yeah. Well, that smells of... (sighs) I'm getting some kind of odor across (laughs) the table that I can't identify. Old bacon. Oh, that's a good scent. What does old bacon smell like? Uh, Sniff his bag. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. A a not very good look for Mike as he just buries his snout in the bag. I don't know how to describe that. Maybe old bacon is the right way to say (laughs) that. Yeah. So some kernels are glossy and some are not. So I guess that's how you can tell what's what. Well, I think that's probably a good concept in life. Some kernels are glossy. Some kernels just aren't. Yeah. Yeah. That's like. Except all kernels. So, so like Ollie North, glossy or not? Did you... <laughs> <laughs> Ollie North, not glossy. Okay. No. So did you ever have like the imitation bacon bits as a kid? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly what this is. You in ever, the best you way. Forget about really? those in the back of the cabinet for five years <laughs> and they expired a while ago? In the best way? I don't, that's I don't, kind I'm, of what these smell like. I don't hate the smell of these. It's not terrible, but it does smell off. It's definitely off. A little, a little bit. I'm just going to shove a handful in my face. Yeah, I need to make sure I get one piece of each. Yeah, I'm going to do one of each. I, I can't tell the difference. Okay, so the popcorn itself is very obviously stale. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, like oh, like oh, yeah. a lot. Oh, yeah, oh God. 
Oh, yeah. That tastes like bacon bits. Yeah. Like specifically the knockoff bacon bits that everybody probably has. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's that's unpleasant. So the front, the taste at the front end Ooh. of this, I really enjoy. Oh. And then oh. it takes a sharp swerve. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, it does. No. Oh. Oh. Put the yeah. That's like oh. that souring in my mouth. Unpleasant. Well, so you just have to keep eating it to keep the fresh no. taste going. That is exactly what yep. I've done, and it it's still back. fine. <laughs> it comes nope. back. As soon as it fades, you put another popcorn in. Nope. You have to stop at some point because you're going to run out. That's how they get you. Yeah. When you start to run low, you run to the store just popping a, cur- a new kernel every, like, 30 oh. seconds. Here's the thing. I think that the maple is the good part, and the bacon as it starts to turn is the thing that's hurting me. I get... See, I get bacon up front. Yeah, I get the bacon fine, up front yeah. too. But then it fades to like half the bacon, but it's all the unpleasant part. Yes. Yeah. I don't get yes. much maple. So I somehow managed to randomly pull out five pieces of popcorn that are all bacon. They really are. Like one is maple and one is because I've yeah. got one that's sweet and only has bacon that it absorbed through osmosis. Uh, and then one that's like real hardcore bacon. So here's what's super weird in my opinion. I've taken some that are just bacon and they seem fine. And then some that are just maple, and they're not bad. But when you put the two together and they start fighting with each other, I think that may be where it gets bad. Oh, that was thoroughly unpleasant. I I stopped after my first, you know, pair. Oh, there's the bad. Okay, yeah. it is the it is the maple ones that are the problem. Oh, the back oh. end on the maple is where it starts to go kind of downhill. I don't know if yeah. it's because it's turned or just it is that way but so yeah. i'm gonna let you know an interesting thing i know for a fact it's because it's uh it was always this way Oof. how do you know because i did a long time ago not on our show but on boards alive from yeah. pax like three years ago okay did a tasting of these with them and we were stunned at how terrible such a great tasting combination could be three of us three full-grown adults had these tried them went oh god no people were around us because there's nowhere like private to do a recording at PAX Mm -hmm. so people were like oh you have popcorn we handed it to them after handing it to five more people there was still more than two thirds of a bag left for me to take back to my booth to which no one at my booth would eat either yeah I so uh, you're basically right. what you're saying is you knew these were bad yeah. and still made us eat it. That's exactly mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Why? You're not a good friend. No. But it is the combination because, like, the bacon uh, one, it's okay. And then if you wait a minute and just have a a maple one, it's sweet and then kind of fades to, like, a weird cardboardy thing. Yeah. But it's not offensive. But when you have both of them, whatever the bacon and that weird maple fade, yeah. they, they do not play well together. And maple and bacon are delicious together. Not here, though. I Most breakfasts contain those, or a lot of breakfasts contain those flavors. Indeed. Or most. Most should. Yeah. So, Brian, I'm going to ask you, I'll start with you, even though you just threw a popcorn in your face. <laughs> yeah. Uh, would you take it to a party? No. Maybe for the novelty. And if they were in date, that would probably help. But It doesn't help a lot. It's just <laughs> unpleasant. Like, it's novel, but it's unpleasant. And you can find maple bacon other things. So, no. That is true. How about you, Mike? No, it's not good. Just hard stop. That's it. Just hard. Just not even a playful banter here. Just no. Just nope. don't do this. Nope. Okay. How about you, Rock? Uh, no, and I am insulted that you let us eat this. And it's such a good brand for, with known good things. Yeah, it is upsetting. Yeah, oh, it is, it's... isn't it? Because their Thai curry chips yes. are amazing. Oh yeah, these and... are like the polar opposite. They are. The worst. And even, like, their poutine chips were good. Like, they weren't as good as the Thai chips, but, like, yeah, a lot of their chips are really fantastic. They're all dressed are fantastic. They're all dressed are great, yeah. They've The ones in America I've ruined for now that I've had these. I understand. They Mm. need to bring these to America. Uh, And what I'm going to say is, I did bring these to a party! (laughs) Ha 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 ha! Yeah, yeah, yeah! You're yeah. number one, Bruce. You're number one. I understand. You are number one in our books. <laughs> Your hate washes over me like a warm spring breeze. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was hoping maybe there was something at the time in the place that made these worse, or we were just working fast, or it was all the people around us. No, these are not good. I would not. I did bring these to a party, but only in as much as that I wanted this this content to be made. I wanted us to have this discussion. You wanted to torture us too. I, torture, I don't think is fair because these aren't like torture bad, but they're not. They're well, not no, good. they're not durian. 
No, they're not. They're not durian, they're but very much not good. Yeah, like, they're not. They're not fun. Much. Just as a side note, yeah. If you try to use the sweet potato things to wash that flavor out, yeah. Whatever that maple bacon thing is yeah. kills all of the pleasant parts of the sweet potato, and it just tastes straight up like packing. Yep, that's not good. Like, it's all gone except for the part we didn't like. Like sweet eating potatoes. an Amazon warehouse. Yeah, like licking the inside of a shipping container or something. Oh, that's all terrible. Okay, so let's try and get out of this with our third and final chip. This time, uh, the first two, we traveled around the world with the third chip. We're going to be just as domestic as we can be, because I believe these got their start in, like, the Baltimore, D.C. area. Philly. Philly, okay. There you go. Philly, Baltimore, D.C. They are wrap snacks, honey jalapeno, Fetty Wap, flavored potato chips. See, that's the disturbing part, is that it's Fetty Wap flavored potato chips. Yep. It's not honey jalapeno. That's Why what didn't they Fetty Wap tastes it? like honey and jalapeno. Why isn't it Fetty Wap honey jalapeno flavor? I don't really flavored. want to find out if that's true. Uh, you're about to. Yeah, because oh, Brian's boy. already told us Fetty Wap tastes like honey and jalapeno. I yep. mean, that's how they the flavor engineers sampled him and made the chips. Yeah. So there, there is a quote on the back. Okay, let's do it. Nobody put me on. I got up and worked extremely hard for what I have. Nobody can take that from me. And is that a quote mm-hmm. from Fetty Wap? From Fetty Wap. Okay, mm-hmm. that's what I was gonna say. I was hoping it was a Fetty Wap quote. Mm-hmm. I got no, some other from the chips. I got some other quotes from Fetty Wap. I don't know how no. much I can read on the air. No. <laughs> well, I mean, while you while we're passing stuff around, if you have some you think you can read, now if you don't think you can read any of them, so be it. I suppose. I mean, well, he I didn't read... rhyme uh with uh, did he? No. No, that no. was uh. That was Master P, I believe, right? I'm just how much about exactly how to no. cook drugs in your trap house can I? No. Nope. Okay. I also nope. remember it was juvenile that rhymed on uh, with on. Uh. Yeah. So I'm looking. I, I see the the chip that Rocky's holding. It looks like a well fried chip. That's it awesome. smells okay. It yeah. Looks like a barbecue chip. Yeah. Yeah. It's covered in flavor powder. Nice as it should Good. be. Yeah. It smells vaguely jalapeno y and. I'm kind of just getting generic potato chip smell. I get the jalapeno. From the bag, yeah, I get a little bit of that jalapeno like fruitiness. I do like like I like the feeling I'm in my hand. I don't know how they're yeah. going to be in my mouth, but let's find out. Yeah, they're not quite kettle chips, but they're a nice solid chip. That is wonderful. Yeah, you really get the jalapeno specific yeah. oh. like that green pepperiness from from a jalapeno. Yeah. That's nice. It is sweet in the front. It has a noticeable bite on the back. Not yeah. painful like it doesn't it's not bad. No, it's just no. It's a sort of slow burn in yeah. the back. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's sweet at first, and then you kind of get the creaminess, and then the spice builds. Yeah. Yeah, that is That's... way more pleasant than the other two. Like, a Definitely. Lot. That is delicious. Yeah, that is, and, and I would say generally is a pretty fantastic chip. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Yeah. I would pick this over a whole lot of, like, th- these would be my new barbecue chips I bring to things. These are really fine. Uh-huh. I might have to bring these to the next party I go to, assuming they're I available in a larger size bag. I fear that they are not. I think they're yeah. only made in, like, 7-Eleven bodega-sized bags. Yeah, the medium size that's, like, not the little you'd put in a lunchbox, but enough for, like, maybe two people. Yeah. So, Rock, I see you just shoving sweet potato into your face as fast as you can. Uh-huh. So tell me your opinions, because clearly it must differ from the rest of ours. Well, it's very jalapeno. I don't like jalapenos. I suppose that'll do so, it. Was it jalapeno enough to trigger that I don't like jalapeno thing? Yes, because it had that green pepperiness. Mm-hmm. Okay. And like, it's not that I don't like spicy. It's that specifically, I don't like jalapenos. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mike, what are your feelings on these? I like them. I think they're, uh, I, I would agree with you in that I think these are a better barbecue than barbecue. Yeah. They've got the sweet, they've got the spicy, and the burn is, like, it's actually there, which isn't in most barbecue chips. But it's not overpowering. Yeah, it's present. And that's all it is. Yeah, it's not yeah. overpowering. It's just, it is. it wants to remind you that there's supposed to be jalapeno in here. Mm-hmm. But it's not trying to, to kill you. But it's got that sweet and salty thing that makes you want to keep eating more of them. Yep. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, I agree with Mike. It's, it's really got the flavor of jalapeno, which, understandably, if Rocky doesn't like that, then it's not for you. But it really does have that, like jalapeno that specific fruity grassiness that you get from a jalapeno yeah like if you ever just stripped the meat out of the middle one and eaten it Mm -hmm. you know um and it's a little the cheese is um it's like not cheese or something it's it tastes almost cheesy it's like a little creamy or something going on 
and the sweetness from the honey. It's salty. These are some of the better chips I've had in a long time. Yeah, I have to say, there's definitely some of the better ones we've done for the show. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, they're not oh, yeah. quite the President's Choice Thai curry chips. No, but, but I would say in a snack brackets with those, the, these, they would have to be put at the opposite ends of the bracket oh, so yeah. they could meet towards yeah. the finals. And I think the, like, I would be willing to bet if President's Choice did a flavor similar to this, it would be a much harder contest. Because part of the, the Thai ch- uh, curry is it's such a weird, unique flavor that it's hard to really compare it. But if yeah. they did some kind of like sweet and spicy chip, like El, uh, President Choice did a sweet and spicy chip of some kind, this would be head to head, I think. You have to say it really impressive. So let's go through. Would you take it to a party, Mike? Oh, goodness, yes. Um, except the only problem being if it doesn't come in bigger bags, it might be a little more difficult. This is not a huge bag. Let's see. What does it say? It is 2.75 ounces or 78 grams. So it is, it's a fairly small bag. And if it doesn't come in any bigger bags, then it might be difficult to take it to a party in terms of just logistics. You're just going to have to get a bunch of bags. And Yeah. We'll have to take a look at, it appears to be, I think I'm reading this right on the bag, wrapsnacks.net. Am I getting that right? They didn't get the .com on wrap snacks? You are correct. Yeah, it is wrapsnacks.net. Ah, uh, yes. To check for bigger sizes. Um, I see Brian doing that now. So I'm going to ask you, Rocky, would you take yeah. it to a party? Um, I would because I feel like other people would appreciate it more than I would. I would just have to bring something else for me. Oh, fair enough. Okay, Brian, I see. Did you manage to get to their website to tell us that they make bigger bags of this? Well, they um, also have uh, Instagram and Snapchat. On their website, you can only order them in one-ounce bags. So this is the large, like the one-ounce is the normal yeah. like single serving that you would see. Yeah. This is larger than that. So they don't even have that on their website. You can just order like a case of one one flavor. Well, let's take a look on some other websites and see if this is findable in more places. Brian, mm-hmm. you taking it to a party? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's delicious. Like like Mike said, the only problem is cost. Like if I have to buy 10 of these bags and they're two fifty each, then I question $25 worth of potato chips. Yeah. But they are delicious. I would take them anywhere, you know, reasonable based on price. That's the yeah. only problem. Yeah, we will definitely be finishing these off, which normally the chips oh, yeah. that we eat on the show are slightly bigger bags, but often it's like days later, Rocky and I are upset they're still here because we're just chomping on them like a week later. Well, it depends. Sometimes they go straight to the garbage. That is true. These, mm-hmm. I think, are not going to make it through the rest of the day. And I'm going to just say what everybody else would say, which is I would definitely take these to a party. I think, especially if they come in bigger bags, these would be my new replacement for barbecue chips because they are pretty fantastic. Good work. Fetty yep. Wap and everybody else on the team. Yeah. 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 And now I want to find some of these other flavors that I'm Fetty Wap up. tastes good. What other what other flavors do you have before we close out? Uh, we got Migos, uh, barbecuing with my honey with a dab of ranch. Nine, no, uh, what? I think um the 7-Eleven up the street has a couple different flavors. Oh, yeah. that, that may be. Yeah, they usually do. Matter of fact, that may end up being our next What the Food episode is we'll try to do a couple of the wrap snacks flavors. Yeah, lot, all the Migos flavors have a dab of ranch. Nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Oh, Trina makes honey jalapeno cheese puffs, so those what? are good. Okay. Uh, honeydew cheese puffs. Oh. Did you say honeydew cheese puffs? That is, yeah. We need to find those. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like um, garbage. No. <laughs> Lil Yachty's got hot cheese fries. Okay. Nice. Okay. Um, got to go head to head with Andy Capper. Fabulous uh, New York deli cheddar. Lil Boosie, Louisiana heat wavy chips. Nice. Okay. Um, Cardi B's got a bunch. Honey drip butter popcorn. You don't say. Yeah. Jerk barbecue, cheddar barbecue. Jerk jerk barbecue <laughs> chips? Yes. So huh. I'm in. Yeah. And, I mean, uh, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. And, and Cardi B? Hot cheese habanero. Yeah, those last several were all all Cardi B. Nice. Yeah, no, we need to, like, the problem is I see these in the 7-Eleven, and it's usually just, like, ranch, like, the more normal yeah. ones, like barbecue ranch. I'm like, well, barbecue and ranch are fine, but. Yeah. I want some of these weird flavors. Yeah, we're gonna have to order some of the some of the more extreme flavors, and I think we can do that. Thanks to everybody that's listening to this yeah, on the first uh, go round. That is, that is, this is exactly the kind of thing we're gonna be able to do is bring you this hard hitting what the food uh, content that you're so desperately yeah. asking for. For twenty eight dollars, you get uh, fifty six separate one ounce bags. Wow! So they you do know not what, have a smaller option, huh? So you know what we might be able to do is we might be able to buy that, try it on the show, and then send them to twenty four of our closest friends. Uh, so, so we're going to keep the other 32 for ourselves? 56. <laughs> no. Oh, God. Bruce mathed real bad. I mathed yeah. real bad right yeah. there. 56. So we can send them to 50 of our friends. Nice. That's going to be a party. Maybe yeah. that's what we need to do is we need to get ourselves to a convention 
and bring the other, like, get a whole bunch of these, uh -huh. do our taste test, and share them with the whole room full of people. Yeah, get, like, our favorite three flavors and yeah. just show up with 150 tiny bags of chips. Yeah. That also sounds like something we could do at an Extra Life event. That, quite that possibly. Is. Yeah. And that may be a thing to do. We'll have to talk about that on the main show to remind people. Oh, is there a main show? There is a main show. This is the side show. We are going to be doing Extra Life this year. Uh, we'll try to figure out the locations, and we'll probably just send a whole separate little quasi-episode commercial out to let everybody know. An epimercial. An epimercial. <laughs> A Marshall sewed. <laughs> no, I think Epa Marshall's the way to go. I think Epa Marshall's, yeah, but yeah, it might be better. Making stuff up here. So, once again, all of uh, y'all that are listening to this, our Patreon backers, thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you, patrons. Thank you, patrons. Gracias. And uh, I've been Bruce. Joining me on the show. Oh. Huh? Huh? And thank you for listening. <laughs> Rap snacks, am I right? I did not expect them to be so good, but gosh darn, they really, really, really are. I don't know that we're going to be able to get a giant box of a uh, hundred million packs and hand them out, but I would say if you get near some of them, you should try them. I hope to try more of the varieties myself. Uh, they are really good. I haven't necessarily had a chance because we've had a lot to eat here. And speaking of having a lot to eat, good segue, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. We are putting out an episode for Thanksgiving, for American Thanksgiving, which you should be hearing this on a Wednesday, uh, which means not tomorrow, Thursday, but the Thursday after the last Thursday in November this time. Uh, we will be putting out our Thanksgiving episode where we talk about Thanksgiving things, and it has a slightly different format, and we play a classic game and all that great stuff. So we're finally bringing back the Turkey Day episode like we used to do, but that we are not necessarily famous for because other people are more famous for that. So uh, if you're if you're around, if you have time on the day, we'd we we will be there. If you await uh, till like Black Friday in the morning, when you're about to go out and face the world to get good deals, listen to us then. That'll be great. Uh, because of that, that is also going to push off our December episode uh, by a couple of weeks. It won't be all the way to the mid-month cavalcade, but it's going to be past the first weekend because the first weekend of December is PAX Unplugged. I personally will be there representing North Star Games. That means I don't have time to edit anything. Also, if you're going to be there, there is the Flipsterific Super Saturday Blitzketeer Breakfast at the Hard Rock Cafe, RSVP required. Uh, all the folks from Flip the Table and from Flip Flory's Super Saturday Board Game Spectacular and Crystal from Board Game Blitz are all going to be there, and I'm going to be there as well. Uh, I'm not credited on there, uh, because why? Why would I be? Uh, but I can tell you I have a ticket. I will definitely be there checking that out. So if you want to say, hey, I would love to see you there. If not, I'll be at the North Star Games booth, gosh darn, the entire time probably. Uh, I'm taking a lot of appointments. If you see me, come by and say hi. I would love to say hey. I would love to talk to you. Please, if you see me, come say hello. We love knowing that people are listening to the show. So there you go. Covers the December episode is going to be late. Don't let it scare you. Uh, it's going to be where I'm probably going to edit the second weekend of December and put it out then with some luck, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then the mid-month cavalcade will come for December next month. But just a note, there is an episode coming out on American Thanksgiving, and there will be a delay in the December episode. Don't let it scare you. So with that, we're going to jump into the game from September, which is Point Salad, which you'll, you'll hear what we think in a minute. And I'm going to get out of the way so you can listen to that. Welcome to the Party Game Cast, featuring the Party Game Cast Patreon Party. I'm your moderator, Bruce. Joining me in the show is Rocky. Hello. Marty. Hey. Mike. Hi there. Brian. What's up? And also an additional Brian. Hey, what's up? Nothing much. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well today. How are you? You know, not bad. Not bad. We've we've readjusted microphones. We've turned them. We've 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 tried to make a thing happen here. We should be sounding better in all good theory, but probably not no, because we're no. still us. <laughs> yeah. We've done a lot of trimming. We've done a lot of trimming. There's been well, a lot of trimming. Better, but and not necessarily good. Yeah, yeah, well, that's fine. That's all. That's actually what we work for. Mike is better, is but not necessarily yeah, good. Mike is balanced. All of us are all turned yeah. up or down as necessary. Yeah. Yes. We're turned. We're balanced. We're ready to go, and we're here to talk to you about Point Salad, mm. a, a game. Let's, ooh, let's begin with. It is not a party game. No. It is. A, it might be a game you would take to a party, especially if you were the sort of game nerd 
that supported a game nerd podcast. This would be very much a game you might take to well, a we party. We wouldn't be talking to any of those people now. Well, we so and we no. know we know that you're out there. And around you, this came out at Gen Con, and it was a very limited amount of them you could get at Gen Con. Or if you went to like the Gen Con stores that did the Gen Con store thing, you could get it. We tried to get it at Gen Con. I got it later uh, so that we could talk about it because a lot of you on Twitter at Party Gamecast said, hey, we'd like to hear about Point Salad. So we got one, and we're talking about it now. It plays from two to six players. We played it at six players. Uh, it is from AEG. I'm sure there are people who made it. Mike, you've got the box. Tell, get, Just tell them about the people who made it, and then just give us just a light overview of how in the heck this thing works. So it was made by Molly Johnson, Robert Melvin, and Sean Stankovich. Stankovich? Stanko yeah, Stankovich. And I think it's probably pronounced Stankowich. No, no, I, I would. Also, wasn't you should not. wasn't Molly Johnson the last one who made it off the Titanic? Uh, that was the unsinkable Molly Johnson. There we yeah. go. Yes. There we go. <laughs> I knew there was something. I knew there was more of a nickname to it. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> Point Salad is a game just about. Uh, what you would think it is salad there are a bunch of cards all the cards have uh, a front with just a picture of a vegetable on it and the backs have different uh, ways of scoring on them uh, it could be you get two points for each lettuce you have or you get three points for each combination of lettuce onion and pepper you have or something like that or the most of this or an even number of that and every turn there's there's going to be this table of vegetables face up and there will be a, a few stacks with face down you can either take two face up vegetables on your turn or you could take one of the face down scoring cards and then you just place them in front of you and you move to the next player and then you just keep doing this and accumulating your salad and your point things and then at the end of the game you count up the points and the most pro points wins and that's it there you go it is a drafting game uh i would just like to in case that helps somebody in their mind figure out what's going on i uh, mean yes but it's an open faced draft where everyone's seeing what everyone else is doing because you don't yes. have a hand no there yeah there is absolutely no secret information in this game whatsoever there is information that lady luck can take care of where maybe something crazy happens because the next card flipped over changes, but you're right, there is no hidden information whatsoever. Yeah, it's all, you during your turn, you pick a couple of, you know, one or two cards, and you put them in front of you face up. And that's it. That, there was one other thing I think you could do that was a free action at the end of your turn, that if you had a point card that you pulled like early in the game, you know that now you're no longer going for that, you could flip it over and make it into the vegetable that it was or so that you could use that in a different card, but you couldn't go the other way. You couldn't flip a card from, say, an onion to a point-scoring card. Yeah, yeah, that would be broken. Yeah. So let's know one thing real quick, because, Brian, you were saying you weren't aware of this term, and it's just sort of like a nerdy board game term that's very much used like yes. in the board game community, is the concept of a point salad game. And what that is is commonly a European game where there's like 22 different ways to score points. You're like, well, I have built the duchy. Well, I have managed to do the most trading with Denmark. Oh, well, I've cornered the market on cheese. Well, I have decided to play the mandala, and I've gotten the furthest into the mandala, meaning I have the favor of the vizier feel like you're not stretching the truth that much. No, I'm really... No, like, no, like, no, like, it really accurate. isn't. Yeah, I'm mixing a couple of games together, but I guarantee you each of those is a valid point scoring... Uh, I have oh. collected the most rock from Burgundy. Yeah, yeah like, and you forgot oh. to factor in any like military conquest path to victory too these oh, are yeah. all these that's are all peaceful Marty. ways except that is you know, true i conquer you all yeah yeah, yeah you may be the biggest merchant in town but i destroyed the village next door and you know raided its coffers i took the time to burn down the most buildings so bruce yeah. just went strictly for money because that's Ex how that goes that's, yeah, yeah. Should, yep there's a way to get money i, I uh, went, I went for gandhi went and nuked everyone exactly <laughs> yeah uh, so that's where this term comes from, but in this case, clearly, it is about getting points while making salad, uh, which is even cuter than you may realize if that is not a term that yeah. you are aware of. But I feel like at the point that you're listening to a podcast about board games, you you might be aware. But just in case you aren't, let's let you know. I mean, it's a some podcast of us... about party games and games you take to parties. Bruce. Yeah, seriously, Indeed. there's no board game. There's no board in this game. There no. is absolutely no board. And, and well, several members of the cast did not know that term, so some of our listeners might. And then you learn something, you're welcome. Indeed. 
Indeed. So let, let's talk about this. How do you feel about this one? I'm going to start with Rocky, only because not only did we play the six-player games that we played today, you and I played two players. So you've seen both the, the small end of the game and the large end of the game. One thing I will note, if you play with six players, use every single one of the 108 different cards in the deck that each have 108 different scoring conditions. If you're playing with less people, you pull cards out of the game to make a smaller deck, and you don't know the missing scoring conditions. You just kind of bury them in the box. So how did you feel about the two-player game, the six-player game? What are your feelings? I enjoyed them both. I like the the different variety of ways to score. Um, I was amused that you can't really go in with a plan. You have to just start grabbing veggies and then figuring out what score cards would work, what wouldn't work. And uh, it, was, it was interesting. I liked it. Yeah, this is very much a game of tactics over strategy. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, and um, you're playing only a little bit affects everybody else. Like, if there was a, a scoring card that you know the next person would really like to have, you could either just grab that or you could grab a veggie that was in front of it and force it to flip, and then they couldn't have it. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, but there is not a lot of take that to this game at no, all. but that's about it. So yeah. Take that, that's, Bruce. That's as much as, <laughs> as I uh, enjoy. Fair enough. So. So let me jump in. I'm going to go to you, Marty, next. And one thing I want to frame everyone with is sort of some of the games that you find yourself playing. Because you are the kind of person that owns a copy of Twilight Struggle. I know because you own my copy (laughs) of Twilight Struggle. Because I realized I was not the kind of gamer that should own a copy of Twilight Struggle anymore. And yes, yet I've played that with you twice. Yeah, I I, I think, I, I want to say I've played four games of it. And you two are three of my four <laughs> games of it. And I now own the 1960 uh, Nixon versus uh-huh, Kennedy version, which is just a little easier for me to grasp. Uh, so knowing that that is the kind of game that you willfully enjoy and like, how did you feel about a game like Point Salad? Well, actually, I did enjoy it. Uh, it was a very simple game, but it was kind of like uh, still fun. And it was one of those things where you can have a conversation with other people yep. while playing it. So it's uh, it, it's a party game in that sense, but it's not a party game in the sense that the game itself doesn't cause the conversation. It's just that's something you don't need to have a lot of attention span for. Agreed. I would say, and we'll step in with this, because when we talked about Llama, one of the things that was said in Llama was, was and I, I love the quote this, it has fewer rules than Uno, and every time you go, ah! <laughs> uh, and what I like about Llama is, is that I feel like I can talk to a person over your shoulder and I'm not, like, hurting you because I'm not paying enough attention to the game. I feel like Point Salad is more complicated, but that it has that same amount of interaction because there's not much I can do till it gets to my turn that I can still talk to, like, you and I can talk to Mike and I can talk to someone over your shoulder and still play the game, and I'm not hurting the game because some of my interaction is talking to other people. Yeah, I mean, if you don't pay attention and it's your turn for, like, five minutes, then, yeah, you're hurting the game. But other than that, yeah, it, it doesn't require your attention. In fact, you really can't do anything until your turn because the cards change so quickly. Now, the one thing I will mention is if you start into, let's say, a long story, you may not realize your turn has come up. Yeah. And your friends may not tap you because they're like, oh, no, he's telling a long story again. Let's give him a little bit of room to do it. Once he takes a breath, tell him it's his turn. That, that would never happen. No, no but if is, it nope. did. Purely a hypothetical, just, yeah. you know, We don't know anyone who would do that. No, just for the listeners. No. Yeah. But you might. Maybe they know someone who would yeah, do that. If in your life you have such a person. Someone who's long-winded and uh, likes to hear their own voice. Yeah. And maybe yeah. elaborates and exaggerates Yeah, just a little. A little. Yeah. Yeah. If only and I, makes if any only story a long story. Yeah. 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 That's fair. If, if there never is someone like that in existence because we wouldn't know i wouldn't no, i've never but, met anyone but i hear those kind of people exist and if they do know that they may accidentally not realize it's their turn and may hold the game up a little bit just tap them are but they, they might do like, that in every game fair yeah. are they like cryptids like you hear of them but you've never met one there's like not- a blurry picture of one walking in the woods <laughs> yeah just a gamer that kind of gamer who'll yeah. get into a conversation in the middle of things shows up story tells a 10 minute story hey, wanders off in um, woods we, from whence he came can i just say we have a podcast to do so you guys that are being oh. long-winded over here i don't know what uh, you're maybe, talking about maybe uh what do we t- settle it down a little bit whose turn was it i believe i believe it's mike's hey mike oh. uh how did you feel about this one because i know and i'm going to for a second you are not necessarily the nicest to simple games they're just not usually your cup of tea uh how did you feel about this one I don't mind simple games as a rule. It depends on the game. This one, it was light enough where you could do something else, um, and there wasn't a lot of 
even though it was turn taking, it w- it wasn't like everyone's doing something at the same time, and there was definitely having to wait for other people. Because the turns were generally, generally quick, generally yeah, yeah unless you're starting a long winded story, which could never happen with us. Um, but they were generally quick, so uh, there wasn't a lot of downtime between your turns. Um, but there also there's not. I mean, you can look at what other people are doing, but it doesn't really matter as much to you. Um, there's not a heck of a lot you can do to affect another player. Like, like Rocky mentioned, there's a little bit you might be able to do to the player that goes right after you, but beyond that, not much. I mean, you just look over to your left and go, well, you're working on, you know, this thing where onions give you lots of points. And I see there's a point card for onions coming up. So I should probably do something about that. Maybe, maybe you do that much. Um, but in general, you can just do something else and uh you can talk have a conversation you can look at your phone you can do whatever and uh pass the time however you want until it gets to your turn which isn't going to be very long anyway it's simple and light enough that it's hard to mind this game i i wouldn't go out of my way to play it i don't think it's that kind of a destination game or anything but it would pass the time if you're uh waiting for something yeah, it, if you're at a gaming party and you're waiting for other people to arrive to play the long games, this is a great game to play while you're waiting. Yeah, it it's a good thing. To, it, it takes a little bit of time, but not a ton of time. And it's heavy enough that your gamer gamers are not going to go, oh, well, that isn't something I would even consider touching. But your light gamers aren't also going to go, I don't get it. What is, I don't, what's happening? Why are there, what are these cubes? What's, why are there 50,000 dice and cubes of every color? I don't, what, you put the cubes in a hopper? What, I don't get it. What do you mean if they fall down, I might get points, but I also might not? That makes no sense to me. Why are you looking up the rules in English? Do you mean there are no English rules for this? What What are we doing? So let me ask, Brian, how did you feel about this? Um, I liked it. I I don't know. I'm kind of of mixed opinions on it. Like, I really enjoyed it, and I would happily play it again. But when I, like, think about it, there's things I would want to change. But, you know, that's just me. I guess, like, where I'm coming from, I, I really like what we call backstabity games. Yep. And this wasn't, like, I don't find a problem with it that it didn't have backstabity stuff, but I could also, I could see myself enjoying it a lot more if there was something backstabity for me to do other than just, like, well, the person to my left uh, has a whole bunch of lettuce and this thing gives you points for lettuce, so I won't let you have that card. Like, but, because we discussed it a little while we were playing it, of, like, being able to play cards on other people, but it would completely change the game. It's just because that's my favorite kind of game, so I guess my brain goes there. Um, but I really liked it. It is a light game. It's the kind of game where you can, like everyone said, you can have a conversation. You can do other stuff. Like, we were talking about other stuff. Um, you don't really have to pay attention when it's not your turn because there's no point because everything's changed by the time it comes back around. You maybe pay attention to the person right before you, um, but the turns are quick, like a matter of seconds usually. It doesn't It doesn't force you to engage with it a lot, so I, I, I kind of... That's a good and a bad thing. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I liked it. It's a lighthearted game. It's a, it's like a good thing to do while you're waiting or if you want, if you're having a heavy gaming session or something, you want to take a break, but you want to do something. You know, it's, it's great for that. Like, hey, we just played Twilight Imperium and we don't want to go home, but man, my brain needs to disengage a little. Um, or whatever, Twilight Struggle, or whatever, whatever, whatever these no, no, crazy it, games bo- are. Both that, Struggle yeah, and yeah, Imperium both, are fair. If okay. it has very Twilight long games. as the first yeah. word, it's probably yeah. going to be a, a Yeah, a big a heavy game, night. and you're like, well, but our night's not over, you know, so I want to do something, but I need, like, uh, this is like, uh, like I've done that on a gaming night with friends where you just play just one or something. Yeah. As it's it's fun, but it's lighthearted, and everyone can just kind of, like, let their brain relax. Uh, you're, so yeah. You're like, yeah, we both don't want to go home, but we also don't want to get the hell out of here. Yeah. So what are we going to do? Yeah, it is not yet a uh, uh, closing time, as, as the song says. Yeah, and I would so I would say, and this is a term we really don't use a ton on this show, although we cover a lot of games that fit in here. When we say they're not games you take to parties, a filler game. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that, because in most cases, filler games are kind of my favorite type of games, so it feels a little disparaging to the genre. But this is a perfect, 
between larger games, or if you're going to play like eight games in a night, it could be one of those eight games where you're not really going to burn anybody out. I feel like it fits sort of in that space really, really well. But I agree, there aren't. There's no take that in this game whatsoever. Yeah, no, there's there's none of the backstabity. But I and I, no. I agree, like filler games are fun, but I wouldn't say like it sounds disparaging. Like it sounds like you're putting it down. Like it's oh, it's just a filler game. Yeah, you know. But no, it's good. I like I. There's another group of friends that I game with sometimes where we'll have like an all day pool party. These little games are perfect where yep. you're like, you know, I want to do something for 20 minutes that's not uh, eating fatty foods or swimming, but I don't want like a heavy game that requires a kit. So yeah. you, so you want to play this game in the half an hour after you eat before you go into the pool, right? Yeah, salad is okay. light. Yeah. <laughs> so Brian, how did you feel about this game? Um, I think a lot of the stuff that I thought about this game has been said already. I agree with Brian. I much rather like backstabby games. So if they had just having a mechanic in there to play a point card on someone that has a ton of cabbage that's a minus five for cabbage to play on someone else would have been maybe the only thing I'd be looking for. But I think it's a really good game for a short amount of time for something between heavy games, right? I'm a little confused as to why the box says it's for people 14 and up. I feel like this is a game you could easily play with eight, nine, ten year olds and they would get it, right? You know, if they can... I'm just curious where I, that comes from. The strategy part of it, I mean, it's not heavy for gamers, but maybe you know, for a nine-year-old it might I be. I mean, I feel like this is a game I would have enjoyed when I was earlier than 14, I yeah, guess. I, I almost feel like that level of math would almost be good for like an eight or yeah, nine-year-old. Like, it's like, this is practice for them, but it's not, doesn't feel like school. Like it'd be... But, because it's basic multiplication is all you're doing. Yeah, it's just addition and multiplication. So I feel like you. I'm just curious as to why that rating is that way. But overall, the game, the artwork, you know, for having six vegetables, right? It's done very well. It's laid out very well. It's a very. It's a game that can go by very quickly. I'd be really interested to see since you guys played it with two, how much different it would be with two, three, four. That kind of thing to see how if we could judge how well the um, amount of cards were thought out like for two players does it play longer for two players than for six just like on average that kind of thing i would say at least in our experience not really so yeah. they did maybe did a pretty good job of like balancing how many cards per how many person people are in the game yeah they cut the deck down to 36 for two people if i remember correctly yeah it actually felt like it ended too soon to me well with it, two players or with yeah, six with two because it felt like it was over very quickly yeah but, no, I mean, I agree with everything, though. If you want kind of a lighthearted game where you're not really having to worry about what everybody else is doing, save for, you know, I know that they have 26 cabbages and the next card up here is five points per cabbage, right? If you're not worried too much about that and you just want a fun game to play that's not going to take the rest of your night that everybody's going to have, I think, a good time playing, I think it's a it's a very valid game for that situation. And I'm going to jump in with something kind of bold and we'll see if anybody comes along with me. Is that when you're looking at games you should be taking to like family get-togethers. Okay, so we're talking about like your Thanksgiving, your required time you have to be around your family that whatever pool party that may not be with your friends but is with your family or even one with your friends but you're like I'm going to bring a game or two. I think this is perfect for that. This is exactly that. I don't want to play Uno one more time. I don't want to play Jenga, another party. If I don't ever play Cards Against Humanity again, it will be too soon. But I need something to bring to show people. And if I have to teach one more game to my great aunt that she immediately doesn't understand, I'm going to flip the oh, table. Yeah. And coming <laughs> from someone that goes that to a house up somewhere with a bunch of family every year and we have to choose okay we want to bring some games but we want to include everyone from the people that are older to the people that are younger so we don't want something too raunchy we don't want something too complicated we want something that's good for everyone to play and maybe you have a bunch of people you want to split off into groups i think this is a perfect game for that so then we're going to do the thing that we do the thing that we're famous for We'll just take it to a party. Now, we're going to begin with, in all cases, uh, you're already going to say, like, no, if it was a big party where it's just a party and a whole bunch of people were just partying, I wouldn't bring it to that. That can already be, we can just assume that that's going to happen. Now, get into the rest of it. Rocky? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I would bring it to a thing where there are people. How's that? Was that better? That's Did good. That that's, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would. I would. I enjoyed it. I would like to play it again, even though I've played it a couple times already. And I have to say, that is relatively rare for you, yes. especially with anything like pure party games. I think you might actually like them more than I do. Pure, pure party games. Well, and it has that, that small angle of randomness that I enjoy in games, because you don't know what point cards are coming up, and you don't know which ones are in the deck, so that's fun. 
and, like that. and there's 108 different ones. So you're going to yeah. kind of remember the archetypes. I don't know if you're necessarily going to remember any specific card, yeah. it feels to me. I guess after a while, you eventually be like, okay, I know there's some sort of carrot, cabbage, onion thing. But you don't know if it's going to be in the deck you're using yeah. based on the number of people you have. Unless so. you're playing with six players, and then you really right. don't know if it's ever going to come to you or not. Right. How about you, Marty? You taking this one to a party? If it was already in the car, I would take it and bring it in with me, but I wouldn't go out of my way to put it in the car. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's a, that's very specific and bold. Okay, so so you wouldn't buy it, but if you had bought it, you wouldn't put it in the car. But if someone had left it in the car, you would take it in the building I to mean, the event. I would if it was there and around. I'd play it, and if I if I had it, and like uh, if I like it was on the way out to the car, is like right there, or yeah. And I keep it in the car, kind of like yeah, for the games to bring in it. I definitely would play it and take it. Yeah. But it's not a game where you're like, oh, I have to bring this game to the to the party. But if I brought it to the party and I said let's play it, you wouldn't turn a game down. Oh no, I, okay. I enjoyed it. How about you, Mike? I pretty much agree with that. Like I, as I said earlier, it's not a destination game. This isn't one of those where you go, oh, I really want to play this tonight. Um, it's more of a hey, we can get one a, a game or two of this in, uh, and then we'll play that, we'll play that, we'll play that, or something else, or we'll play this before dinner, or uh, in between, you know, the movies, or whatever it is. Just, if you've got some time to kill, it's a filler game, as you described it, and it does that job well. It's not going to offend anyone um, in terms of content or in terms of just being a too complex a game. It's, it's just it's an inoffensive, decent game, and it I mean it's got sort of cheery illustrations with, that are very colorful, and it's hard to find a flaw with it. The the only person this game would offend would be Ron Swanson. No meat, no meat in it at all. There is no meat. No, it it is definitely a salad of points and a point salad. Indeed, Brian, how about you? Yeah, I take it. I mean, to me, this is the what a good a really good example of the difference between a party game and a game you would take to a party because i would absolutely take this to a party whether it was a gaming party or a party where we weren't expecting to game but it might happen because this i think like it's simple enough that it's approachable to people who just maybe play cards against humanity and nothing else because it's as simple to learn as that you know other than there's math but it tells you the math and it's addition and multiplication and you're an adult you know you can do that um or you have a smartphone if you can't you know, but I, I, it's approachable, it's fun, it's light. It, you can find a place to fit it in just about anywhere, whatever kind of party there is, as long as it's the kind of party where no one's going to freak out that you whip out a game. But beyond that, yeah, the, like this is a, a like almost perfect example of a game I would take to a party. So, yeah. Yeah, I would guess in most cases you could probably whip it out. Brian, yeah. how about you? I would definitely take this to a party. I think it's a game that no one's going to love. And also, no one's really going to hate. You know what I mean? I think it's going to be appealing to a wide variety of groups. You can play it with, you know, we could, we played it here. We enjoyed it. I could play it with my cousins, my family members, or something. Younger people, older people. I don't think anyone's going to jump out of their chair to play the game, if that makes sense. But I think that everyone would enjoy playing it, and it's a good game to get a couple games in when you really need a break from something a little more thinkful or something that makes you like really focus on yeah. gaming, right? Fair enough. I'm going to say that I sort of disagree with a few of you. I genuinely like this game. I want to play this when I have a chance. I'm glad I have it. I plan to bring it places. I think I can probably force it on a lot of people that don't <laughs> normally play games because it's it's as simple as, okay, these cards tell you how you score. These cards are vegetables. Grab two vegetables or grab a scoring card. When's the game done? When all the cards are done? Okay, cool. And we go. And I really like that about it. Um, the only thing that's sort of fiddly about it is setting the deck if you're playing less than six players. But it, I, I don't it's even... really not that fiddly. It, yeah, it's eighteen cards per player. Okay. So, and you... it just separate the veggies out. Yeah. And really, if you're gonna play it, there's actually been some discussion online where people have been talking about the fiddliness of this game, and what everybody that's fighting for the game says: at the end of the game, you've already separated your veggies. Just keep them <laughs> separated and make the deck for the next game. And I think you'll probably be better off. And I, and I run with that. But I genuinely like this. Um, I agree with you, Mike. It's hard to call it like a destination game because like 
that there's a lot of extra weight that comes to that, and I don't know that a game that you play in 15 minutes yeah. can have that. I mean, nothing this simple can be a destination game. Nothing and, this quick. Unless it's like, the only way I think something this quick could be a destination game is is if it is some very expensive or rare, like, dexterity game. Like, oh, we'll play Crokinole. For some people, yeah. that is a, but and that's like a 15-minute game, but it's mostly that it's a $250 15-minute game that makes it a destination. I, I don't know. A lot. Some people I know treat flux as a destination game i wouldn't but i know some people that do you know that is very fair i didn't think about that because normally i think of that destination game that one to be a uh, munchkin which just takes so much longer but yeah no some people do treat flux that way i don't think this is ever going to get kind of the cult of personality that flux has i don't know that any game will ever get to have quite the cult of personality that flux has anymore because so many games come out all the time it- touching on what you said before about being a game that is extremely easy to explain that you can it's really nice that you're not having people go well let me see the rule book because i don't understand like the only thing maybe we had a question on was cards that were like if you have an even or an odd number of vegetables does zero count as even you know, which it, it should, right? Yeah. But that was the only thing we thought about. You, Bruce, literally and the ex- uh, ties for most and of ties. These. Yeah. So Bruce's explanation of it's cards, it's salad. You get these point cards. You go. You replenish them as they go. You get two, or you can get a point card. That's it. It really is that simple to learn, and you can explain it in two minutes and have very few questions which is better than a lot of games out there where you get these guys that are like well let me see the rule book and they read through it for 20 minutes right. and with 108 different scoring conditions i think there's enough going on that even if you're a gamer you're not entirely offended by this like a lot of you've said maybe you're just like yeah i would play it if it's there and it's not like a i love this game but like you wouldn't be mad whereas if you say flux to some people you can actually hear the sound of eyes rolling no one's going to feel that way i don't think about point salad yeah. To give you some idea of the heaviness of this, by the way, uh, it is a small, fairly small rule book that is in big type and has a bunch of uh, like examples, picture examples, and is still only seven pages long. So, like, you can't spend twenty minutes reading this. No, you, you just couldn't. There's and, not enough there, and that is yeah. to its benefit. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with uh, like what you've been saying is, it's. I think it's a bit of an underrated game, or it's going to be an underrated just because of what it is. Is in, like it's not a destination game, and that's what I think people are looking for. Like, oh my god, let's go play this awesome game. But you can get tired of destination games sometimes too. I think this is just kind of always going to be your B grade game, and I think that's an underrated thing. Is like it's never it's never going to be unwelcome, and not a lot of games fall into that never unwelcome category. Usually, you have to know your audience or whatever. Where's this? That's one thing I like about it is is you could always take it out and and very few people are going to say no and everyone's going to have a fun time even if it might not be the most exciting lively game you played that night it's always going to be fun. So I'm going to let you know an interesting thing Brian. The reason I couldn't get that game at Gen Con is because 500 copies of it sold in 1 hour. I'm sure like things that are being released at Gen Con probably became destined but like give it six months and are people still going to be super excited by this game or is it just going to be like okay it was super fun and now i want to play something but but like everyone will still have it and play it but no one will be talking about it the way they are some crazy new game i think gen con hype is something to be talked about uh, too i mean a lot of that is just the hype train and it's aeg so they they drive the hype train a lot oh do they make other things (laughs) they make a couple other games yeah so, I mean, they've got their own room and everything like that, their own gift bags and all kinds of stuff at, at Gen Con. So if they want to drive the hype train and, and they want to sell out, sell, sell something out, as long as it isn't like just something that people just cannot get behind at all, they'll sell it out. So I would say they had a couple other games that were along with this that were part of like the game night that were the same sort of price point that they did not sell out. Or if they did, it wasn't that flash of one hour and they were all gone. It was like by the end of Gen Con, they eventually sold them out. This seemed to have a little something on a little stank on it that just had it sell what? out quicker. A little stank witch. Yeah, a little stank witch on it. <laughs> what? That just got it selling a bit faster. I think there's a possibility... With a little, with a little bit of luck and more people kind of talking about it, more people getting it to more places, that this could be your next kind of filler game that people talk about. This, you know, like an Azul or something, where people are like, "Hey, you know, I don't know if it was a destination game, but I really like it, and I play it with everybody I know." I, I think it could. There is a potential for it to end up there. I don't know that it kind will. Of like where Zombie Dice was for a long time. Like Maybe. That, yeah. yeah, I got these. Yeah. 
this set of dice that I can bring out if we're bored and we can play that for a few minutes and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's that kind of game where like everyone's gonna like it, but you're probably not gonna say, hey, everyone, come over and let's play Point Salad for four hours. You know what I'm gonna say? <laughs> hey, everybody, come play Point Salad for four hours. I, I wouldn't not say, do that. Hey, Bruce, no. Bruce, yeah. I'd be very impressed to see you play any game for four hours. I, hey, I've played <laughs> I've played eight or ten hours of Teach You Straight. I think I can probably yeah. do yeah, four hours of Point Salad. Uh, as a note, since I know when this will be coming out, uh, we're going to do one quick thing here at the end of the show. Is we're going to note that we are doing a 24-hour gameathon for Extra Life. Yes, we at are doing three... our annual Extra Life. It's yes. actually 25 hours. I, it might I be. I need to change oh, yeah, the time to 9 a.m. No. Nope. Or yes, or okay, or then you're allowed to take a one-hour nap at any point. So then that'll make it so I can do 20. Because <laughs> I do it anyway. Do anyway. I do it anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to build it in so it's allowed. Uh, but we're going to do it at Three Gears Games, Three three Gear Games. I always put the S in the wrong place. Uh, it is at Savage Mill, Maryland. It's in the beautiful mill there. We're going to be doing it for 24 or 25 or however many hours 18. works for 18. Uh, if you want to join our team, uh, we would love to have you. It is the Party Game Cast slash Break My Game slash Three Gear Games. It's one big team with all of us in it. We would love to have you. I think we'll put something up where you can probably make us play a game for an hour. So if you want to make me play an hour of Point Salad. Or you want to make uh, Mike play an hour of point salad? That's the thing you can do. Or you can make us both okay. play an hour of point salad. I know a game I'd like to see you two play. Not Chinese chess again. But, uh, no, no, not Chinese chess. We did Chinese chess. It's a no, pirate we really game. didn't. Ch- I mean, well, Chinese, yeah. It's a pirate-based game. Yeah, well, What's the name, name of that no, game? But it's, I don't remember. What's that pirate but game I you guys can't like? Remember. Mike might remember. <laughs> I, I do remember it. Yeah, you might what want to tell know? people. How much do it I need to donate? It is called Yeah, Yeah, I'll play like that's actually a copy. That game is the reason I've put the one-hour cap <laughs> on what I'll play a game for. Yep. Yeah, and th- and it saved us for Chinese chess because it took us an hour and 20 to learn how to play it. <laughs> wow. And then we tried to play it for an hour, and we were like, I think we've put in our time here. Yeah, Chinese chess was just... Yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't... I don't think the game was that difficult, but not being able to read any of the pieces or a- any of the rules was yeah. a little difficult. It was tough. Any of the rules? So you just put the shapes on the board and hoped? I mean, we had to translate. We found oh. English translations of the rules, and like it all a, we got was it, the set. Yeah, it was a whole oh. thing. It was a whole thing. And if you want to make us go through a whole thing for an hour, feel free to take a look at our team at yeah. extra hyphen life dot org. Look for the party game cast. Look for any one of us, or if you'd like to join us on November the second, we would love to have you. I just wanted to squeeze that in here at the end. Once again, Patreon backers, thank you so much for supporting the show and making it so that we can do episodes like this and we can grab Point Salad and play it for all of you. Up in your moderator, Bruce, joining me on the show. Mmm, salad. Mmm, points. Ew, vegetables. Yum, vegetables. Meat. And thank you so much for listening. Interestingly enough, and I'm sure I mentioned it in that episode, but Point Salad was the game at Gen Con that everybody kept telling us we needed to try. We have to try Point Salad. We have to try Point Salad. And as you heard, it's a pretty it's a pretty good game. I, I, I was a big fan. So there you go. That was the mid-month cavalcade. That is all of the stuff that we gave to our Patreon backers who supported us at patreon.com slash partygamecast. If you'd like to get this content early, remember you can join us over there as well. And not only does that get you content, but it also helps us make more content. It helps us get all the things that we need to be able to do the show and all the things we can do to upgrade the show and get better mics and all that kind of stuff, which is just fantastic. Uh, once again, thank you so much for listening. We will be back in a surprisingly short amount of time for us with our thanks giving episode and then don't forget december is going to be a little delayed thank you so much for listening uh have a, a fantastic holiday if i don't talk to you till then uh till that episode comes out especially if that comes out late in the day uh good luck uh, with the sales do okay with them uh, and if you're not in america hey uh thanks for listening i'm sure that's all stuff that you've heard about um yeah so see you see you on thanksgiving